So yes, it is finally possible to play PS4 games on the Apple Silicon Mac thanks to a new emulator called Shared PS4, which recently integrated macOS and Molten VK support into the emulator. And today I'm gonna to be showing you some of the games that actually do work, but make sure to keep your expectations very low. This is very much a kind of alpha release. Full macOS support hasn't really been announced and the majority of games aren't really gonna work that well. However, today I'm gonna to be showing you what the emulator is currently capable of. And I think that there is a huge huge amount of potential for where this emulator could go. Especially because over the last few months, weeks, and even days, there has been huge performance increases and compatibility improvements, especially with more simple games like Dead Cells being emulated and more complex titles like Bloodborne, especially when we apply things like patches and cheats in order to improve performance as much as possible. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to install the pre-release version of Shad PS4. I'm gonna show you how to install the system files. We're gonna install a game, we're gonna install updates. We're going to pair a Bluetooth controller and we're also gonna do is to patch a game like Bloodborne so that we can get better performance squeezed out of it and get these games working as well as possible on Apple Silicon hardware. So one thing to be aware of is that in my current testing, I've tried this on the M4 generation of chips and I believe that there's some issue with M3 and M4 generation right now, which causes crashes very frequently in the game, especially in Bloodborne. However, in this video, I'm gonna be testing out on my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. So I believe that the M1 and the M2 generation don't have these kind of crashing issues. So if you have that older machine, you might get better stability at the time of recording. There are also fewer graphical issues on the M1 chip, for example, these kind of glowy lights, which only appeared when I ran this on the M4. And this is corroborated by another user called Hokase, who's been very helpful in helping me get this working and also helped to provide some save files, which I did some testing on Bloodborne. And emulating Bloodborne isn't the only exciting thing we're gonna be receiving because it's now holiday season. Time for gifts, surprises, and maybe an excuse to spoil yourself just a little. This year, maybe somebody in the family is gonna get a brand new phone. Talk about a game changer, right? But then it hit me. What about all my photos, context messages, my entire digital life on my old phone? How do I get all that stuff onto this beauty without pulling my hair out? I wonder if I'm transferring from an Android phone to an iPhone, or worse yet, iPhone to Android. Enter Dr. Phone. This magical tool makes transferring your data so easy, it's like unwrapping another gift. Dr. Phone lets you transfer everything, contacts, messages, photos, even your WhatsApp chats seamlessly between devices. And get this, it doesn't matter if you're switching from Android to iPhone or vice versa, it's that versatile. And it's not just for transferring data. Dr. Phone can help recover deleted files, unlock your phone, repair software issues, and even back up and erase data securely. It's like having a personal tech wizard right at home. So if you're unwrapping a new phone this holiday season, don't let data transfer worries ruin the fun. Click on the link in the description and make the switch easy peasy. Your new phone and old memories deserve it. Happy holidays. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to go and download Shad PS4. So I recommend going to the GitHub page rather than the website itself. I'll leave a link to this in the description. And what you wanna do is to go to the right hand side here and then click on releases. And once we're in releases, there are basically two versions that we can look at. So we want to kind of ignore this version here, Shad PS4 0.4.0 because this requires the Molten VK DY Lib swap, and uh, this hasn't been updated. But if you're watching this later, this might have been updated. If it's been created after December 2024, then it probably has the fix inside it. However, today what we're gonna do is to download this pre-release version, and there's only one version at the time of recording, and this basically gets updated every single time the continuous integration spits out a macOS QT. So, you know, the one I tested before is gonna be eight hours ago, but it's not on this list. There are other ways to find it on Actions. You can also download them here by clicking on a specific workflow and then downloading the artifact, but you have to be logged into GitHub in order to do this, and you can download it from there instead. However, today what I'm gonna be doing is just showing you how to get the standard pre-release edition, and this is gonna be rolling over and changing every time there's an update. Just be aware that there might be something that breaks in the version that you download. This is very much an emulator that's a work in progress, especially on the Mac. Let's download macOS QT here. So the QT version is the one with the user interface. So that's the one that we want. The rest aren't useful to us. The SDL version is not useful to us. We want the QT version. And then basically once that's downloaded, we're gonna to go to Finder. Then we're gonna to go to our downloads folder and then double click on this tar.gz folder and it's gonna go ahead and extract. So if it doesn't extract for you, just go ahead and download the archive utility. So now we have Shad PS4 downloaded. I'm gonna move this to my applications folder and then we're gonna go ahead and scroll down and then find Shared PS4. So we want to run this on Mac with Sequoia and I'm gonna double click on this to open it for the first time. And it says it can't open, 
but uh, don't worry about that, just press done. Then we're gonna go to the Apple logo, go to system settings, and then we're gonna go and scroll down until we get to privacy and security. So this is how you get past all the gatekeeper unsigned apps when we're on Mac or Sequoia. You have to scroll down here, and it says here, shared PS4 was blocked, click open anyway. And then we're gonna click open anyway again. Then we're gonna type in our computer password and press okay. And we can see a shared PS4 is opening here click allow, allow any permissions. And then basically we need to supply a directory to install games. So when we install a game on Shared PS4, it's gonna go onto our local system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my user folder and then we're gonna make a new folder here. I'm gonna call this one Shared PS4, press create. And then anytime we install a game, it's gonna be located within this folder. So here we're gonna press okay. And now Shad PS4 has opened up. So you can see here 0.4.1 WIP work in progress main. So now I'm gonna do is show you how to install these sys files. So sys files are necessary PlayStation 4 kind of BIOS type files, which you're gonna need and you're gonna to have to extract them from a PlayStation 4. So here I've got my files here. So this is the kind of file format that we're looking at, the SPRX files. So you kind of want all of these to be installed ideally. And this is gonna be quite essential to prevent crashes in the game. So you can run Bloodborne without it, but it'll crash but this will help prevent crushing as well. And it's also gonna enable compatibility for other games too. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy our SPRX files, press control click and copy. And then we're gonna locate the location of where these files should go. So what you need to do is press the go button here, and then we're gonna hold the option key on our keyboard. The option key is gonna reveal the library folder here. And then we're gonna go and navigate to our application support folder, double click on this. Then we'll scroll down and because we've opened Shad PS4 once, the Shad PS4 folder has been created here. And then we want to do is to put this inside the sys modules folder here, double click. And then we're going to paste those SPRX files here and those are going to be installed onto the system. So next what we're going to do is to install a game. So of course, we're going to open up Shad PS4 again. We want to install probably the most popular game that we want to try on PlayStation 4. We're going to install Bloodborne. So this is what my Bloodborne file looks like. It's a PKG file. You should be extracting this from your own jailbroken PlayStation 4 using a genuine Bloodborne disk. However, this is what the file name looks like. It's a .pkg file. So what I'm gonna do is press the open button and it's gonna install into the folder we specified earlier, shared PS4, press okay. So now it's extracting PKG. So it's basically just downloading everything onto the system. So once the game's installed, we're gonna press the okay button here and it's gonna refresh and we have Bloodborne installed. So one thing that you might notice is that we are looking at version 1.00. Ideally, you want to be using version 1.09. And uh, what we're going to do is to install the update. So we're going to press file here and install PKG. And then we're going to find our update file. So this should also be extracted from your jailbroken PS4. So we're going to be installing the PKG of the 1.09 update, which is the latest patch that was ever made for Bloodborne. And it's saying that we want to patch it to 1.09 plus yes. It's now successfully installed and we refreshed here. It says 1.09 here. So we've got the latest version at the time of recording. So one thing that you might wanna do is to right click or control click on Bloodborne here and then go and select some cheats or patches. So these are gonna be quite essential to get good performance out of Bloodborne. What's especially interesting is the patches. So we wanna go ahead and click the download patches button here. And now we're gonna press okay. And it's showing patches from the Golden Hen repository. We might wanna grab some from the Shad PS4 repository as well so just select that one click download patches press ok and then we have two different sets of patches here the shared ps4 one has more patches so one thing that you might want to do is to select skip intro fix we might want to select the 30 fps fix and another quite important one is the resolution selection too so there's a resolution patch here which kind of puts this down to 720p, which might be quite important for getting good performance out of your Mac. So what I'm gonna do is to press the save button here, and then that's gonna help us nearly guarantee better performance on this system. So you can go ahead and tweak this however you like, just depends how this runs. The other thing is that I have a DualSense controller paired via Bluetooth onto my Mac. So if you go into Bluetooth and then put your DualSense controller into pairing mode, you can add it via nearby devices. I also use an Xbox controller, that seemed to work fine. So what we're gonna find is that there aren't actually any toggleable options. I can't even get the controller menu opening up on this version of Shared PS4. You can't really configure anything at the moment. So Obviously this is a work in progress, but uh, it should work out of the box. So the last thing we need to do is to go ahead and double click on Bloodborne to load it up. So here we are. I've got my metal HUD turned on. So this is gonna show 
the frame rate information. And also I can confirm my DualSense controllers paired here and we can go ahead and select the menu and I'm just gonna play as normal as if I was playing on a PlayStation 4. So basically, we're gonna be playing offline. There's no way to play this online at the moment. We're gonna press new game, press next, and then next. So now you can see that the opening cutscene here has loaded up and what you might notice is that there are fewer graphical issues when you're running this on an M1 generation. I'm not really sure why that is. And I'm glad that I kept my M1 Max chip. So I'm just gonna enter my character name and then we're gonna go ahead, press the finish button and then load in. So here, of course, I'm gonna full screen as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and play the game. So here my character is waking up from the morgue. Let's see how this runs. So it might take a few moments for this to kind of acclimatize and get running at about 30 FPS with this uh, 30 FPS patch that we applied, but uh, it seems to be running okay. So performance in this open area isn't that great. So what I'm gonna try to do is apply a few more patches to see how this works. So I'm just gonna go quit out and then I'm gonna go to patches. And then let's try disabling motion blur chromatic aberration, press save and try launching it again. Now performance is looking a little bit better. And uh, we're still running this at 720p. Let's see, we can actually play some games. So another way to increase performance I found as well is uh, what I'm gonna do is to install some Bloodborne performance mods. So this mod here is called Bloodborne Visual Tweaks. So I'll leave a link to this on Nexus Mods. And uh, what you need to do is to log into your free Nexus Mods account. And then we're gonna download FPS Boost 1. And then now that we're logged in, we're gonna go ahead and manually download 1.0. And once that's downloaded, we're gonna to go to our finder and then double click on this raw file. And if you don't have an app to extract this, we can use the unarchiver, which is free. Just get this from the app store. Once that's installed, we can just double click on the raw file to extract it. And then we're gonna select the unarchiver. And then what we need to do is basically copy this map folder. And then what we're gonna do is to go to finder and then we're gonna to navigate to the folder where we downloaded all of our games. So I specified here the user folder and then put it under shared PS4. That's what we configured earlier. And we're gonna actually modify some of the maps in the game. So just be aware that when you're merging folders on a Mac, what I'm gonna do is to have two folders open like this, and then we wanna merge it. If you, if you do this, you're gonna replace everything with the map folder. What I wanna do is to hold the option key and then that'll put a plus button. And then this now has the option to merge. So we're gonna merge the two folders together so that all of the modifications are added into here. And uh, this visual tweaks folder, it basically removes a lot of the visual clutter from the game and helps Bloodborne to run a bit faster. Another tip as well is to disable some of the special effects. So this special effects folder here, we can modify this. I'm just gonna call this backup. And then when we load the game, it's gonna have no special effects and a lot of the map data is gonna be removed. So I'm gonna open up Shared PS4 again. And now we're gonna start up the game once more. So here for a moment, it's a little bit smoother. I'm just gonna full screen this and then we can go ahead and play a bit. So yeah, definitely closer to hitting that 30 frames per second. Definitely a big improvement and worth doing those mods. So generally, I think that the game works pretty well on the M1 Max chip. I think it's probably quite playable in the sense that you could probably complete quite a few of the bosses without any kind of significant crashing. By patching out some of these kind of special effects, we have removed things like the ability to see shots. Also, the audio in Shad PS4 seems to be a bit garbled on this game. However, if you're used to the game, you might find this perfectly playable. I also tested this out using a save game from the user Hakase, who kind of let me play further into their save game, which they actually did on macOS. So it means that you can get quite far into the game, even in this very early stage of Shared PS4 macOS development, which is very encouraging news. So I did try out some other PlayStation 4 games as well. It's not just a Bloodborne emulator. We also tested out Gravity Rush Remastered. It seemed to render the cutscene pretty well. This is the apple dropping at the beginning of the game. However, when I got into the game properly, I couldn't seem to kind of see my character properly. I'm not sure how the game should look, so I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure this is not what it should be like. Now, one game that did pretty much work perfectly is Dead Cell. So this is very responsive. The controls and the sound all seem to work correctly. The bar is pretty low for 2D games, but as a 2D PlayStation 4 game, this seems to work perfectly on macOS using shared PS4. So other games apart from Bloodborne are definitely possible. 
So anyway, that is PlayStation 4 emulation on the Mac. I do see a bright future for this system on the Mac platform. Hopefully all of this information is going to get outdated very soon and we get a more mature release of shared PS4 for the Apple Silicon Mac. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.